The, the other poll, I said there were three. This is the third one. Resolve Political Monitor. It shows that a big cut to immigration is well supported by voters. A 66%, two-thirds saying last year's intake was too high. Here's the Treasurer again on the defensive today. The budget will put downward pressure on inflation, not upward pressure on inflation. Uh, the way that we are managing the budget and the economy responsibly combined with the way that we've designed our cost of living help uh, will be part of the solution to our inflation challenge, not part of the problem. And this is a problem, Labor. Labor's wedged itself on Big Australia. They love Big Australia. They hope all these migrants will eventually vote for Labor, but they've needed big migration numbers to basically stave off a recession, and now they're caught here. Uh, well, indeed. And, look, uh, it's not just Labor. Labor has pushed it high. There's no doubt about it, and we've seen record uh, levels now. Uh, but over the decades, governments have relied on high immigration just to artificially push the economy along. Well, it's got to the stage where it's not working anymore. There are too many people, and even the Treasurer has admitted that there is a housing crisis. Labor's policy is now to drastically cut immigration. So how is it that Labor can say, yes, we are trying to cut immigration, we have to do that, and then, oh, well, if the, the uh, leader of the opposition says he's going to do it, it's bad for the economy. Jim Chalmers is caught between a rock and a hard place here. He's trying to argue for lower immigration because that's what the majority, 66%, want. Labor is seen to have introduced and has introduced record high levels of inflation, uh, of immigration uh, since COVID. And now they are trying to argue that further cuts uh, from the leader of the opposition uh, would actually hurt the economy. They can't have it both ways. And what Australia needs is a controlled and planned immigration policy in accordance with what is happening with the economy. I say this again, I've been talking about immigration now for about five years. We have a plan for everything in government. Most departments have a big strategic agenda. The only plan we do not have as a country is a fair income population plan. And the fact that we don't, the fact that the politicians on the left and the right do not want it written down, do not want it debated, means it's all about the economics. It's about this fakery in the budget, Dennis. And I think Australians are actually calling them out over this. Um, Assistant Minister for the Republic, it looks like he's going to go to God. Well, not the uh, MP. He'll stay on likely in the front bench. He's got some other bits to his portfolio. But the talk is the Prime Minister's going to dump this Republic uh, title on his front bench. And, of course, heightened speculation today of a mid-year reshuffle. Well, I think that's right. They've got to dump that title out of that area. And they've also got to dump some of their underperformers. I mean, I cannot believe they can go to an election with Claire O'Neill and Andrew Giles in those particular immigration portfolios. I think there'd be a massive campaign liability, both of them. Do you think we're going to have a reshuffle over the break? Well, uh, just on the point about the Republican uh, assistant minister, uh, that's pretty small beer in the broader picture. Uh, Anthony Albanese has made it clear, even today, that he's not going to embark on any more referendums. The last thing he wants to do about that terrible mistake he made about promising to hold a referendum on the Indigenous voice to Parliament is have another referendum. And so that's out of the, out of the question. And I think that... The much larger question is about a reshuffle, not just on the front bench of the government, but on the front bench of the opposition. And I think that the government certainly needs to dump some of these underperformers. Once we get past some of the immigration issues, we need to see a big shake-up in immigration and home affairs. They have been a complete failure uh, for the entire period uh, of the... Uh, Albanese government. Uh, that's just the start. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Jim Chalmers is obviously doing the best he can, but I think that at the same time, Peter Dutton needs to look at firing up some and promoting some of the younger, more junior people he has in positions, because I think some of the senior team 
are not cutting through. And, you know, when push comes to shove, we're going to have an election in the next 12 months and people will be looking for an all credible alternative, not just Prime Minister, but team. And Peter Dutton can't do it all on his own and nor can Anthony Albanese. I have to say I agree with you on the coalition as much as I agree with you on Labor. I think Dutton's got some dead wood. I think he's got some lazy buggers in there that he needs to send back to uh, the back of the back bench to wake them up a bit and put some uh, young and hungry ones out there at the front because it does look like he really is the tent pole there for the opposition. There's not a, not a spread of effort as there should be uh, when they're this promising in the polls. Um, I wrote about this yesterday. We'll, we'll finish here if we can, Dennis. The judgment of the PM in his office... Um, I wrote about this yesterday. This is the decision by the Prime Minister to evict his tenant. It got a huge reaction in the paper. I mean, he's got four homes to live in, two, of course, that uh, we pay for. The bloke he's kicking out, well, he's just got one home. He'll be kicked out and into the rental market in the middle of a housing crisis. Absolutely, he's got the right to decide who lives in his house, right? That's the gift of any landlord. But you've got to question the political judgment of the PM at this time, don't you? Uh, well, I think uh, I think you're being a bit harsh and a, a little bit unfair there, uh, Peter. Uh, Prime ministers can't win on this. In what way? Uh, the only thing they can do, well, because if they are elected and they keep uh, the uh, investments they have, uh, they keep shares they have, uh, even if they put them in a trust like Malcolm Turnbull did, there's always a problem with what they've mm -hmm. got. John Howard decided to get rid of all his shares when he became prime minister. And it, it was the only way to do it. And I think uh, Anthony Albanese hasn't evicted his tenant. He's selling his house. Um, and good on it, somebody from the you know, Housing Commission who has an investment property. Good on him. Well done. And I think that, you know, he has handled it poorly. That's not entirely his fault. I don't think his office had anything to do really with what he was doing. Uh, it's always a bad look uh, and it's always hard. Kevin Rudd's wife had to try and divest herself of her very, you know, interesting business, a very uh, vigorous business. And so I think Come on, that Dennis, they can't Dennis, 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 I can't issues. disagree with you here. No. Nah. I can't agree with you. I can't but, agree with you here. We're in the middle of a housing but, crisis. His office does know. His office would be involved in the decision because they have to update the ministerial entitlement, so it is a discussion internally. But the third point I'd make... John Howard, in the end, didn't rent out his home in Wollstonecroft because it was just not worth the, the political headache. And Abbott never rented out his family home. I mean, he always said, if I'm living in a, in a house courtesy of the taxpayer, I look like I'm greedy if I rent out my private home at the same time. Why does the Prime Minister, given he's got two homes, it's a housing crisis, he was a single man, it's not like he's going to sell this house and he and Jody are going to move into it or any of these properties while he's got the lodge and Kirribilli. I just think it's an own goal at a time when he's on the back foot over housing. Well, I, I disagree with you, Peter. I think that he, he didn't have any choice. Yes, the headlines haven't been good. He did. He, he actually persevered uh, with a lower rent during the uh, COVID pandemic. He was a good landlord. He wants to sell the house. OK, and, you know, let's, let's move on from it. Uh, he's got to do it. All right. And I think that, yes, he would have told the office... And, and he's got to do the, the registration. I understand all of that, but I'm sure that he didn't go into his office and ask them whether he should sell his house or not. Uh, so, yes, we can agree to disagree on that, Peter, but I don't think that PMs We're allowed of to any flavour can win on this issue. I like a bit of civil disagreement, Dennis Shanahan, on this program. <laughs> You'll stay on the PM's Christmas card list, and uh, I suspect I'm off it, but I think I was off it anyway. Good to see you, Dennis. We'll see you next. <laughs>